Okay, I'm just going to quickly just tell you how to bounce the mix down once you've once you've finished a mix and you want to put it on CD. I'm um, just going to show you the pathway through to doing that. Um, one of the first things to do is to set your locators around the whole track. Um, I usually just give it a bit of space at the end just for any reverb to die down. Um, you can either do it with the locators or if you scroll right forward you've got this little kind of grey box um, that kind of hangs hangs at the back there. That will also tell the track when to stop bouncing as well. So there's a couple of ways you can do it there. But as you'll see, uh, it's not that important to have this because there's an option to actually wait till the echo dies down before it stops. So once we've done that and we're all happy with this and we've got a fade out or anything, you don't even need to fade the main track out because you can do it in Wave Burner and look at the Wave Burner video for how to do that. All we're going to do is click this dialog up here where it says bounce and if you hover over it, it says bounce mix as audio file to disk so it's going to bounce this whole mix of how we've created it it's the same old track it's going to bounce that whole track down as one audio file um, that we can then burn to cd so if we click the bounce um, dialog box you'll you'll get this dialog box now as soon as you click bounce um, what it's going to do is create a bounce folder in your in your home drive so when you've selected record uh, all the audio files for that track are in here uh, the logic folder is here and you'll also get a, uh, a, a folder called bounces now what I like to call it is something fairly obvious so demo track and I'm going to date it uh, 28th of the 3rd 11. I like to date all my mixes so that I can keep a backup and an archive and see see how the work has progressed. So we're going to call it that and we're going to save, save it in this file. You can also save to the desktop or save to a drive or whatever you want to do. But I like to keep, keep everything in one folder and you can soon move things afterwards. Now you've got a destination uh, checkbox here. PCM is pulse code modulation. It's the way that um, the data is actually stored. Um, so if we check that box, you've got uh, options for that file format here. Um, you've got choices of Sound Designer 2, which is a, uh, an, a fairly antique um, file format. It's not used that much. It was one of the original Pro Tools formats, so it's, it's there for compatibility reasons, really. You've got WAV or WAV, um, and you've got CAF. Um, AFE is the default Mac standard, just like WAV is the default Windows standard, so usually just stick with AFE. Um, most modern players will play AFE's just as much as WAVs, so stick with it. Um, we should have recorded into 24-bit, so uh, depending on where your what your destination file is, um, you want to choose between 16 or 24-bit here. I have no idea whether they've given you 8-bit as a choice. Um, so if you're archiving your your tracks and you're you're doing your final bounces before you put on CD, I would suggest archiving them at 24-bit um, and then doing going down to 16-bit as the last thing you ever do. Um, so if you're, for example, if you bounce at 16-bit and then do some extra processing in WaveBurner, like you compress the whole mix or you EQ it, that is going to increase your word length and you'll need to dither again. So you're better off uh, not changing the resolution here. Uh, sample rate needs to be 44.1 if you're going to CD, so you can select it there out of all the choices. Um, file type needs to be interleaved. This means that the left and the right information will be in one file. Uh, you can split them. This is a nod to Pro Tools users who, some, for some strange reason, have two files for stereo um, with the suffix L and R. So double the file sizes, yippee. So keep that interleaved. Um, dithering needs to happen if we are changing the resolution down. So if we're going down from 24-bit uh, to 16-bit, you can select the dithering algorithm here. I like to use the Apogee one. Sounds great. Um, so... Yeah, use dithering if you're going down to 16-bit. What I tend to do is keep them at 24-bit when you bounce from Logic and then do the dithering as the last thing you do when you burn to CD in Wave Burner. That's just the way I like to do things. You've got choices to add to the audio bin so you can keep um, the bounce track in the audio bin, but it's going into the bounces where you can soon drag it in, so I tend to not check that. And you can add it to iTunes. Please don't do this. I don't want to have iTunes absolutely full of lots of bounces. Um, but this is an option if you've got logic at home and you want to be doing this, that's where you can do that. Um, you, you've then got start and end times, which should marry up pretty much uh, with what you've got there from the 
uh, loop locators um, and you've got modes you've got real time which I would often um, well always recommend um, it gives you a last chance to listen to the mix make sure it's all right um, you'd be surprised the amount of times you notice something um, else when you're listening to it offline is quicker um, but it has certain downsides I'm convinced that the automation tends to blur the edges a little bit more when you do it offline um, and you've got no idea if something's gone wrong especially if you're not um, going to be bothered to listen to your CD um, which lots of people don't which is crazy um, anyway you've then got the option to include the audio tail um, so this is what I was talking about why it's not so imperative that you get your end locators um, absolutely where you want them because you can include the audio tail which means it's going to make sure that the reverb dies down before it stops recording it um, normalization uh, pff, leave it off um, don't need it what that's going to do is find the absolute highest peak and make that peak zero and bring everything else up with it um, I only really think normalization has uh, a place when you bounce your final mix if you want to get rid of any headroom um, other than that I would steer clear of it again at this point so that's under the pulse curve modulation uh, that's the main window but you can also bounce other things at the same time so we can actually turn on an mp3 bounce and we can do the same thing and um, select what stereo file we want I tend to stick with 160 if not 192 and above if you if you've got the file size bounce the 320 if you if you've got to have a, an mp3 um, generally I think they sound bloody awful um, but you can bounce the same thing so it will, it will do one one time round bouncing and then we'll spit out two files at the end uh, the, the A file or WAV file if you've chosen it and an mp3 uh, ditto you can save as uh, m4a for an AAC codex for um, iTunes which do sound better than mp3 um, they're slightly uh, less lossy formats you've also got a burn uh, option so you can actually believe it or not bung a CD in the drive and without any of this you can burn it straight to CD yay uh, except that it's um, you've got wave burner which is a fantastic burning CD software so why would you bother um, and anyway you're going to be putting lots of things on in one go so I tend to not use it either so once you've done that you can click bounce I'm just going to quickly do an offline one and put it 16 bit and put some dithering on it and click bounce it will quickly go through the project and there we go so if I quickly just navigate to the finder create a new finder window and go and find that I'm gonna find it in where have I saved it? in logic somewhere in the demos in the logic demo and then bounces that is our track I can select it hit the spacebar for a quick demo there it is and hopefully we should have all the reverb kind of went a bit wrong there but you get the idea so there's the track I'm going to just quickly delete that and there you go that's a quick way to bounce your tracks down so you can uh, take them home on a drive or whatever you want to do with them have fun